Hi everyone! So lately I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys via Facebook and Instagram about specific houseplant supplies that I use. So today I thought I would go over 16 of my favorite houseplant products with you. These are my go-to houseplant supplies. They're the products that I use most frequently. And I do want to let you know up front that I will link where possible all of the products down below in the description should you want to buy them. And I just want to be clear up front that none of these are sponsored. I'm not getting any kind of kickback from any of these or anything like that. But let's go ahead and get into these products. I'm going in no particular order. And a lot of these products are just common household items, but I use them so frequently for my plants that I actually keep extras on hand just for my plants. For example, rubbing alcohol, 70% plain old rubbing alcohol. I use this for so many things. I use it to disinfect my snips in between cutting plants. For those of you who have seen my DIY pest control spray video, you'll know that it's in my pest spray that I do. And if you have not seen that video, I will link it down below in the description for you guys so that you can check out all of the ingredients that are in that as well. But I also use this sometimes just on a cotton swab to take care of mealybugs if they're on my plants. And honestly, sometimes if I'm really pissed off about a spider mite situation and it's on a plant that's easy to wipe down like an alocasia, I won't even take the time to mix up my pest spray. I will wet down a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and just wipe those leaves straight with that alcohol and then always rinse them off after that a little bit later just so your plant's leaves don't get totally dried out from the alcohol. But that's just severe cases when I'm really, really pissed off at the spider mites. But our next product that I wanna talk about is another similar household item that you will probably find in your medicine cabinet, and that is hydrogen peroxide. I don't buy nearly as much of this typically in a year than I do of the rubbing alcohol, but it's pretty dang close. So I keep a lot of extra bottles of this on hand for my plants, and then I keep one for myself. But this has so many uses, you guys. It really is a whole nother video that I'll have to do for you at some point. But once again, I do use this in my pest spray that I make. I use it when I do root rot treatments on my plants. You can use it to sterilize soil when you need to sterilize soil. So many uses for this. I just, I can't not have it on hand. So let's move on to our next product. And I'm kind of realizing that actually those first two products that I showed you are kind of like medicine for my plants when I'm using those things. I'm using them to, you know, disinfect things, kill things, that kind of thing. So why don't we look at things that actually help my plants grow next. And we'll start with my fertilizers because I've been getting a lot of questions lately about fertilization. And I am going to put together a actual video solely on fertilization for you guys. I've just, it's a lot of information and I'm trying to figure out how to get it into a shorter time frame because I don't think anybody wants to listen to me drone on for an hour about fertilizer, but I will be getting that to you guys sometime here in the near future. But this is primarily the main liquid fertilizer that I use. This is made by Bonide. It's just liquid plant food. And basically you guys real quick, I also get this question a lot about what the difference is between plant, plant, I can talk today. Plant food and plant fertilizer, they're the same thing. They can be used interchangeably. I don't know why, you know, marketing person said, hey, let's call this one food, not fertilizer. I don't really know the thought process behind that. But when I say plant food or fertilizer, I'm, I'm meaning the same thing. But this is just a 10-10-10 in terms of the NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is what that stands for once again. And so this is just a well-balanced fertilizer, and this is great for most of my plants. So I also just follow the directions on the back. I know a lot of people out there say, oh, dilute it more or less, but this actually is giving you pretty accurate directions because it's telling me to dilute it more or less depending on how often I'm actually fertilizing my plants. So I just follow the directions and I've never had a problem doing that. But I do have one other liquid fertilizer that I use for some of my plants. They're a little bit more picky about things. And so this is by Dynagro. It's their Foliage Pro and it is an NPK of 936. So this has got higher nitrogen, lower phosphorus, and then kind of middle of the road potassium. But what I like about this one is that it has a lot of additional ingredients in it, including like all kind of the minerals that plants really want. And as far as I can tell, this one doesn't, or if it does, they're not listing it on the label. So my plants that are a little bit more particular about needing like more calcium or magnesium or 
things like that, I give them this fertilizer as opposed to the other one. And then also any of my plants that need like a lower level of phosphorus, I use this one for, and I really like it. I'll look it up and I'll correct myself on screen if I am wrong about this, but I don't believe Dynagro makes a balanced, like just like a 10, 10, 10, same number in PK fertilizer that also has all those minerals in it because I'm pretty sure I looked into that once before because that's probably what I would buy instead of the other one and I don't think they had it. If I'm wrong, I will flash it up on screen for you and let you know. But same thing here, I just follow the directions for use and it has done fine for me and it definitely, my plants seem to enjoy both of these fertilizers. They've all been growing like mad. So once again, they're linked down below for you. But also I do use rooting hormone from time to time when I am propagating plants. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you guys what I'm using. And this is also by Bonide. Bonide just happens to be the primary brand of product that is carried in stores in my area. And this is just their basic rooting powder. So it's just a little bottle. And basically I just dip the ends of my propagations into this before I put them into soil. And I do use it sometimes in water propagations, really just for my hibiscus plant. But really this is something that I use more frequently when I'm going straight to soil, especially if it's a plant that takes a little bit longer to root such as my hibiscus. But I also experimented when I had to re-notch my ficus elastica after it got spider mites after the original notching video. Those new notches I made, I experimented with sprinkling a little bit of this onto the notches and you're gonna be getting a follow-up notching video here in a bit. I'm still just waiting for the branch to get bigger. I'm not gonna wait for it to get like this long, you guys, but I want it to be noticeable and not just be like, is that just a leaf coming out or something like that? And it is starting to pick up in its growth rate. I am looking at it right now. So you will be getting that video. It may still be a few months out and I will tell you all about what happened with the notches I made with the rooting powder in that video as well. But definitely a great product to have on hand. Absolutely love it. Okay, moving on. Um, let's go to some key tools that I use on a very regular basis. And maybe some of you, well, let's just start with the big one, the snips. Everybody has to own a pair of snips or a pair of scissors works fine, but just try to have a dedicated pair of scissors just for your plants if you're gonna use scissors. But these are just little snips that I ordered on Amazon. I really do like them a lot. And I like that they're kind of like really nice and like narrow focus camera, narrow up at the top and just narrow in general. It's easier to get in when a plant is very kind of tightly packed stems, like say on a peperomia or on my cyclamen, and I need to get in there at the base of the plant to snip off a dead leaf or a spent flower. I just find that this is real easy to get in there. And yeah, I just absolutely love these. They're small, they're compact. They don't take up a lot of space. And once again, I do make sure that I sterilize them with a little bit of that rubbing alcohol in between use on individual plants, just in case there's some kind of pest thing or you know bacteria or something that I don't know about. But speaking of bacteria, pests, things you don't know about, another thing that I bought early on in my plant journey that has just been great for me, especially when it comes to spider mites, is a lit magnifying glass. So this magnifying glass lights up. It has different color options. I don't really know if the different color options really is necessary, but the light helps and being able to magnify on a leaf to see if perhaps there are spider mites. Because sometimes you guys, I get so paranoid about my alocasia plants when I see speckles on them and I'm like, mm, maybe it's just dust. But spider mite damage can look almost like dust spots on your plants. So whenever I see that, I'm always like, oh my gosh, are there spider mites on there? And I break out this magnifying glass and I get up close in there to see if there are actually pests on there. So that way I can catch it even quicker than I could with my naked eye, because typically I don't catch it until I start to see webbing and we always wanna to try to catch it before that. So I highly recommend this. I don't think it cost me that much. Like I said, if I can find the link to it, I think I just got it on Amazon. I'll link it down below. It does come in a nice little felt pouch to store it in, which is nice. So that way you're not like getting it scratched up or anything like that. But try to go with as much magnification as you can get because if it's too low of magnification, you're still not gonna be able to see those pests. But definitely something I use very frequently. Also, perhaps you've bought some plant supplies of sorts and been given a free tiny shovel. This is the world's like, tiniest little shovel right here. And you've probably been like, what the heck am I gonna use this for? You guys, I use this thing so frequently, it is not even funny. 
especially if I have smaller plants that I am, you know, maybe I'm taking a plant from like a two inch pot to a three inch pot and maybe the leaves are very close to the bottom of the plant or for example, like my succulents where it takes up almost the width of the pot and there's not a lot of room under there for me to just be grabbing, you know, my substrate and sticking it in there with my hands. I use this shovel for stuff like that all the time because I can just get a little bit and just tilt it down in there. Now it takes, takes some time to do that, but I'm not making a mess. I'm not wasting soils, not getting like all over the counter. You know, I actually just, I use this so much. It's not even funny. I'm telling you, it is an excellent tool. I love it. I couldn't live without it. It makes my plant life so much easier. And I do have a slightly narrower version of this shovel as well. I don't use that one quite as frequently, but every now and again, that one comes in handy too. Now, in addition to these little mini shovels in that same order, and I think it was my Bonsai Jacks gritty mix that I bought is what these came with as like a free gift. And I'm glad they did because I use all of this very frequently. Now I've talked in previous videos about chopsticks and all the ways you can use chopsticks, but I use this metal chopstick more often than anything else. And I mean, I could not live without this thing. It is great. So if I am potting up seeds, for example, for my Dichondra Silver Falls, I've harvested a lot of seeds off of that plant and I have planted them. They're growing into beautiful plants. But what I do is I use this to poke the holes in the soil to drop the seeds into. I also use this if I'm propagating a plant and going straight to soil, I use this to make the hole in the soil to stick the plant down into. If I have soil that is looking a bit compacted and like maybe it needs some extra aeration going on in it, I use this to poke holes in the soil to aerate the soil. So many uses for this. If I am potting up a plant and I've used my tiny little shovel to get things in there, but it seems like the soil's not getting all the way down into the holes. I will use this, or not holes, but gaps around the roots where the soil hasn't gotten into yet. I will use this just kind of probe up and down to, to get that soil to fall down into those gaps around the roots. So many uses for this. And it's nice because it's metal, so it's really easy for me to clean. It's not gonna get like moldy or deteriorate over time like a wooden one. So highly recommend getting yourself a metal chopstick if you can. And I kid you not, you guys, I see all of these kinds of things given away for free with a lot of plant products. So just, especially on Amazon, just look and see if there's like free things with some things and buy the one that has the free tools. It's a good, good investment. Now let's talk about some like watering type things next, I guess. And I have mentioned in several of my videos that I do use mosquito dunk in my watering can to help eliminate and keep fungus gnats out of my home. And you can also use mosquito bits. I just, when I first started using it, the dunk was what I could find in my area more so than the bits. I do see the bits more often now, like in places, but I'm just used to using the dunk. So that's what I keep doing. So mosquito dunk is just little discs like this, and it contains a specific, I think it's like a bacteria of sorts, like that's not bad for your plants, but it's bad for the fungus gnats. I'll flash it up on screen for you what it is. And so basically I just break off like a small, like probably like no bigger than a quarter size chunk of this, put it in my little mesh bag and leave it in my watering can like all the time. And so it needs to dissolve into your water so that the water has that ingredient in it. And then that kills off the fungus gnats. Now I do have sticky traps. I know a lot of people are probably thinking, well, I use sticky traps. I used sticky traps when I first had a bad outbreak of fungus gnats, but really it's only catching your adults. It's doing nothing about the eggs or anything else. So once I started using the mosquito dunk in conjunction with the sticky traps, I got it under control and now I don't have to use the sticky traps anymore. And honestly, you guys, I have so many sticky traps sitting in a drawer and I'm never gonna use them because the dunk itself really gets the job done better. So highly recommend it or the mosquito bits if you can't find the dunk in your area. Now in my recent vlog, we did a little bit of plant wiring together. So you did get to see if you saw that some of the containers that I use when I'm wiring my plants. I do have just these basic plastic drip trays. I just buy these at my local gardening store basically. I'm, they're super cheap. I think they're like, I don't know, four or five dollars a tray and they come in different sizes. And then I used this Pyrex. I have two of these little Pyrex dishes. I use these like on the regular. I don't even use them for actually storing food anymore because I use them pretty much every day to water some of my smaller plants where the water runs through too quickly. I put them in here and that way they can reabsorb some of the water that runs through too quickly. I use those a lot. Now for my larger plants, 
that won't fit in these trays and I didn't really want to go buy a bigger tray. So it dawned on me that I've got a ton of pie plates that I don't use because I don't make pies that often. So my pie plates also get used primarily for watering my plants. For example, the Monstera got watered yesterday with this pie plate underneath of her. And yeah, that's, that's basically what my pie plates get used for. But in addition to all of this stuff, when it comes to watering your plants, or I guess this is somewhat related to water, not watering your plants, but these coasters are a lifesaver for my furniture. And they're just little felt coasters. They also make um, like, what was, what's the material I'm trying to think of? Like cork ones of these that you can find almost at any like, well, Home Depot and Lowe's sell these for sure, but also all my garden, center stores around here do. And you can order them on Amazon. I think I actually got this one on Amazon. I'll link it down below for you. But these protect your furniture from water damage. And I have these in like every single size possible. And I put them under my plants that are on surfaces that I don't want to get wet. So definitely a go-to plant product for me right here. Now I have also recently been having to tame a lot of my plants that are getting a little bit unruly going out all over the place. And so I'm just using your basic plant Velcro. Now I will say, I don't think it's necessarily the most attractive thing, but you know, you, you do what you gotta do. But it basically just sticks to itself. So you wrap it around whatever you need to secure, whatever branch or petiole or whatever it may be you need to secure upright to say a stake or something like that. And it just, connects to itself. So you just cut the strips down to the size that you need. And the nice thing is it's like easy to reuse. But yeah, I've been having to use this quite a bit lately. I'm probably flashing up footage right now of my Caladium Hilo Beauty because it was getting so top heavy and it moves towards the light so quickly that it kept like falling over. So I ended up using this and securing it actually to, uh, there are like some sticks that are left over from Toby's modular like cat house thing because I had a lot of those left over. And it was the only thing I could find that I could make tall enough for that plant to attach it to. So it's not the prettiest pull, but you know what? It's getting the job done until I can go get something a little bit nicer. That's a more permanent solution, but definitely super useful to have on hand. Now, these last two supplies that I'm gonna talk about, I mean, I, when I started doing this, this has just been like a game changer for me. And you guys have heard me talk before about using clear pots. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of good like options for sturdy clear pots actual nursery pots in the US for some reason. Apparently in Australia, super easy to come by. Everybody just gets everything at this store called Bunnings there. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with this whole Bunnings thing, but like I literally have on my like, you know, one day I wanna go to Australia, what do I wanna do when I'm in Australia list? Visit at Bunnings is now officially on that list because of all these things I see all these people talk about. Oh yeah, we just get it at our local Bunnings. Okay, Bunnings, if anybody from Bunnings out there is watching, can we like open some Bunnings in the US, please? Please? Pretty please? But anyways, since I can't get nice clear pots like they sell there, I actually have started buying these plant liners. So this is actually just a liner for a pot and they're super cheap. Like this is, so this is basically like a six inch clear pot. Now it's still not as sturdy as like a regular nursery pot, but it, I mean, it's pretty sturdy. It's not like super flimsy, it bounces back. Sorry if that noise was really annoying, <laughs> but these are super cheap. This was like 40, it's 49 cents. And so I just buy a bunch of these. They have them in eight inch sizes and I think even like a 12 inch size as well. And I've been using these as my pots. Now there is no drainage, which is where my next and last product that is one of my biggest go-to products. I love it. I'm so happy I bought it. It was super cheap and it is just your basic soldering iron. And I use this to poke holes into these pots because it's just, it's easier to do that than to try to drill it because this is a little bit flimsy for my drill. Now for bigger, like plastic, harder plastic pots, like what this Monstera is in, I'm still going to use my drill. It's, it's thicker. I don't know how well this would work. It'd probably still work. It might just take a little bit longer, but for this, this is just so super fast and easy to use to poke those holes in there so that I have drainage holes. Now, pro tip that I haven't been doing, and that's why the tip of this looks a little bit nasty right now. Come on camera. Y'all, why won't it focus lately? Okay. So if you can see how that looks kind of blackish, I need to do a better job of cleaning right after I use this. So your pro tip is get some steel wool, some brass wool, something like that. As soon as you're done using this to poke holes, as soon as it's cooled down enough for you to handle, use that steel wool or that brass wool to clean the melted plastic off of here and just keep it clean. That way, you know, you won't be 
like this and then having to spend like hours trying to scrub it off, which I tried to do right before this video. And finally I was like, I am tired of scrubbing this. That's your pro tip for keeping your soldering iron clean and working properly. So I hope this has been helpful to you guys. If so, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button down below. And if you were wondering about my soil and soil amendments, because I didn't address any of those in this video today, that is because I do have a completely separate video all about my soil mixes and what is in them. And you can check that out next right here. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha!